and speak with our family members, to come out and speak with our, our followers, to come out and speak to our loved ones. And that is why, like the, the uncle man said, the program is on, uh, sorry, the issue is under investigation. And as a result, I will not be able to, or I am not privy to certain information, but I will do justice to this particular issue because it is my person that has been affected. It is my privacy that has been invaded. And I will try as much as possible. Whosoever's interest is attached to me, I will clear the air so that um, the rest will leave it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, I want to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving me the opportunity to stand here. But I also want to thank Allah for the cooperation and the understanding of the Gambian people, not only members of the Gambian Action Party or my immediate family members. I want to thank Gambian people. If I have had ever thank somebody, it is today that I want to re echo those thanks many times. First and foremost, when this incident happened, I live with a family, I live with a woman, and I live with my parents. Most times when these type of things happen, the first person that is severely affected, that could even be an understatement, that is severely affected, is your spouse. And I want to, in, on camera, thank my wife for her understanding and her cooperation. And also through her, thank her family for the support that they have given me all throughout from last week to date. My wife has been doubting me when this incident occurred. But alhamdulillah, when she went through every bit of the incident, she vowed and swore that we are going to stand in this shoulder to shoulder. I have a reason why I was involved in politics. Those, of pe those people who knew me, I have served this country in different capacities. I was a medical officer before I joined the military. And while I was a medical officer, I served this country diligently. And when I joined the military, I also served this country with the best of my abilities. Never was I wanting Never was I found defaulted as far as my responsibilities were concerned. I have served also in the military at different capacities. And during that time, I have exhibited all qualities of a leader, but all qualities of a true citizen of this country. And as a result, when I moved from the military to the diplomatic corps, I continue to live up to those expectations. I have been one of those few Gambians who have such backgrounds to serve in the medical corps, but to also serve in the military and also serve as a diplomat. I am few of those Gambians who have such backgrounds. And while I was in the diplomatic corps, I have done a lot for this country as far as I am concerned. And therefore, my reason to join politics is to join those people who are in politics to, this move, to move this country forward. It has never been my wish. It has never been my desire. It ha I have never been known in the political arena. But for some reason, because I'm in a diplomatic corps, a friend of mine introduced me to some gentlemen a few years ago. And they came to my house for me to advise them because they have an ambition. They want to establish a political party. It was during that time that I started being, getting closer to the people who are into politics. And when I took the decision to go into politics, 
my aim and objective purposely is to ensure that I do not join any scrupulous people or individuals or group of people to dupe Gambians because that has not been my DNA, it has not been my trade, it has not been my desire, it has never been my way of doing things. However, I have joined a group of people. We have established a political party, a political party that I have sacrificed financially and I have committed and sacrificed the comfort of my life, my family, and my every dependent on me. Because I believe that there are people who are out there who are genuine people like me, who wants to use politics to develop this country. And I thought that was a group of people that I have joined to move this country. But what I want to make it clear is that there's nobody that can use me to do Gambians. There is nobody that can use me to bait Gambians into any illicit or to do anything that will sway me from the objective of developing this, this country. It is as a result that as a flag bearer of a political party, I am standing by those principles. I stood by those principles from the day that I was announced as a flag bearer of Gambia Action Party. And whilst I was serving in this capacity, a lot of things had happened. Some, of, some things that happened had even provoked the thoughts of me resigning from that responsibility. Because usually it is often said that, tell me your friend, I tell you who you are. In order for me to avoid being caught up in that kind of circles, we have discussed it at some, at some corners. If it wasn't right for me to quit, to look for other avenues. But as a military officer, a retired general for that matter, my commander always said that you don't change commanders in the middle of a battle. And that is to say that when things are tough, that is not the time that people run away. When things are tough, that is the time people glue to each other. When things are difficult, that is the time that people understand because in every difficulty, there are opportunities. And therefore, I just want to give this press briefing the accurate and the exact thing that had befell me and my family and the members of the people who supported me through Gambia Action Party. On the 7th of July, on Tuesday, I was sitting in my house and I received a call from a, a known caller from UK. The guy called me and said, are you Lamin? I said, yes, I am Lamin. And he said, Do you, are you aware that people are distributing your nude pictures in the net? On the net, I said, no, I am not aware of that. And who are you? He said, I am not a member of Gambia Action Party. I am a member of a political party. He mentioned one of the big, biggest political parties in this country. He mentioned that political party to me, that I belong to this political party. But there are your nude pictures that people have access to. I don't know if you are aware. I said, my nude pictures, but how is that possible? He said, this is what is up. I said, OK, now send me the pictures. Few minutes later, he sent me the pictures. I look at the pictures, and I said, but this is a distorted picture. These are distorted. How do you get this things? He said, a gentleman called me. Immediately before he, to he told me that, he sent me his WhatsApp uh, um, number, his Gambian WhatsApp number. That is the person who first called me from UK. When he sent me his WhatsApp number, I added it, and I have his WhatsApp number. Now we are communicating through his WhatsApp number. Immediately, I received the pictures. Before I even contacted uh, Interpol, one of the senior leaders, one of the senior members of Gambia Action Party called me and said, I have, this, the period is not more than five minutes when all these things were unfolding. He said, I have pictures from a friend from the UK. He said, people are distributing your nude pictures on the net. I said, but how did you manage to be in touch with these people? Because the person who called me, I don't know where he comes from. He's never known me. But he said he got my number from somewhere. 
So I asked this senior member of Gambia Action Party, how did he manage to get this thing? That senior member of Gambia Action Party, the source that he got the, the pictures, and where I got the pictures were different. He gave me the number of the person who he got the pictures from. So I contacted that person. I said, who gave you these pictures? But he did not elaborate. He told me that we will do everything possible to make sure that we stand by you, to make sure that this thing does not go viral. So I thought that this is not go is, is the, the, the magnitude is serious. Immediately, I called Interpol. So when I called Interpol, I reported the matter. Interpol, the first thing that they told me was, go and open your computer, your laptop. I opened my laptop. They told me to go to computer. I went to computer. They told me, go to properties. I went to properties. And, and on properties, there are inscriptions there. They asked me to check. And I read out all what I was seeing at the time. And they said, no, your PC is OK. It is your Facebook account and your, P, uh, your computer, your uh, uh, handies that were tapped or hacked. He said, what you do is don't talk to anybody. The person that contacted you, use him as a mediator between you and the hackers or the scammers. So I also complied. And the guy who called me from UK also called me again and said, these people say they demanding 5,000 euros from you. If you do not give them 5,000 euros, they will destroy your political career. I say 5,000 euros for what? At this time, why, can I, why am I supposed to pay 5,000 euros? So I called Interpol again. I told Interpol that these guys are asking for a ransom of 5,000 euros. And Interpol, what they told me was that now what we try to do is we want to know where they are calling you from. So what you will do is agree with them on something. Tell your, your mediator that he should tell them, OK, now you want to send um, some amount of money. So I told my mediator, tell them that, yes, I want to send some amount of money. So my mediator sent them, told them that, yes, we want to send an amount of money. So at that time, they gave the mediator the name, the surname, the city they are from, the country they are from, and the telephone number. So when they gave this to the, uh, my mediator, he forwarded those details to me. And I forwarded those details to Interpol. Now, Interpol told me, this is going to be a very difficult thing, but try and see if you will be able to acquire it. And I said what? They said, OK, now ask them to give you um, one of their national ID cards uh, copy or passport copy. So when I told the boy, the boy even told me, I even asked that from them, from them but let me ask again if they will do this. So the boy came back to me and said, no, they said they're not going to send the national ID cards. Now, what we have found during that forward and back was that I said to myself, I think I have to take um, another channel of communication in order for us to be able to do something about this. So I contacted a friend of mine in the Gambia who has a family in the UK. And that family also, the, the, the son is also an IT specialist. So what we did was we contacted the, 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 the mother. The mother, through, uh, through her, contacted the child. And then we were able to reach out to Facebook. Now, when we reach out to Facebook, the interesting thing here is this. When the boy told them that we, we are going to send them the money, what we are trying to do is to trap them. Because according to the information that I received from this boy, that it had happened to a Gambian not long ago, and they were the one that assisted that boy or that victim to be able to uh, apprehend the, the culprit. So when we contacted this gentleman to be able to inform Facebook, the boy also prepared a fake money transfer receipt so that the 2,000 dollars that we, 2,000 euros that they requested, we're going to send it through that. All this information that I'm talking about, the, we, I have shared it with almost all the, the members of uh, Gambia Action Party, and I will try to make sure that I share it some of the form of you here at the end of this press conference. So when we were able to reach this guy in the UK, this my own personal contact, we were able to reach out to Facebook, and that is why this illicit content is not been able to be transmitted on Facebook. But what interestingly, what happened here is that whilst we were going forward and back, these people were continuing to issue threats that let my mediator understand that I'm a, a political uh, leader, I am also a presidential aspirant, 
if, if I do not do this thing, they are going to spoil my career. All this is contained in the audio that has transpired between my mediator and the scammers. So at one point, we, re we knew that the 299 is in Benin. The, the scammers or the hackers are based in Benin. So when I, I communicated that one also to uh, Interpol, Interpol, in their own way, they contacted all the documents that I have, all the information that I have, I passed them to Interpol. And what they did was they contacted their counterpart in Benin and also in UK. So when they did that, I also continued to do my own investigation. But I also continued to contact the people who first gave me this information. Along the line, we realized that the Facebook that they are using belonged to a Gambian. The picture of that Gambian is on the Facebook, that Facebook account. The name of that Gambian is on that Facebook. And that particular person whose Facebook they are using, or the account they are using, is a very close friend of one of the senior members of Gambia Action Party. So what we did was, when we were able to, during our investigation, we were able to trace that the person whose Facebook they are using is, has been in contact with this senior member of Gambia Action Party. Whether it's through this particular incident that befell me, or whatever reason, but this was what has been established. Now, when that happened, now this issue has gone out of control. But from the scammers, um, what has been established is that if I paid them 5,000 euros, they were going to delete this information from their system. It is also contained on the audios that they have shared with us. They are going to delete it, but also they are going to give us phone numbers in the Gambia of people that they are dealing with. So when they said that, then our, our curiosity broadened. Because now we want to know who are those Gambians that they are dealing with. So on, on Thursday, Friday, I went to Interpol personally. When I went there, the person whose account, Facebook account they are using, he has never, he, when I met him at Interpol, he told me that he has closed his Facebook account in April last year. Now, he has never reported that people are using his Facebook account for any dubious act. So when I met him at Interpol office, what we, he told me was that in June, he was also a victim of such scam. His naked pictures were distributed and videos were distributed. Now he said he wants to help me to be able to carry out the investigation. But as a security officer, and because I am a victim, I want to handle my issue separately. And what I did was, I contacted uh, Interpol, and I also contacted the serious management or serious uh, crime, CMC, to be able to also be involved in the investigation. So during the course of the investigation, they've, um, we've established that there are a lot of numbers that I have been called. A friend of mine in Germany called me and said somebody was asking for my number. Friends in UK called me to say that somebody was asking for my number. And somebody has sent me several times the Facebook account of this particular person whose account they are using. Friends, they say, this particular person is asking me. This particular person is asking me, is requesting me, is requesting me. And each of those people, I told them that these are scammers, never um, accept their friendship, which they have complied. But at some point, they have acquired my own number. And they started sending me or calling me and sending me all sorts of threats. I have received calls from a Senegalese number a Gambian number, uh, a, France, a French number, um, another number, a lot of numbers from Benin, and another number from Cote d'Ivoire. So when I had this old, all this information, I sent those things to Interpol. Now Interpol promised that they were going to do a malicious call tracing, just to know how many people are these people in contact with in the Gambia. To my greatest shock and dismay, to my greatest shock and dismay, this illicit content and these pictures and videos were circulated in the Gambia by my own members, members of Gambia Action Party. This was what really shocked me. They've sent it and also even sent it to my family members and friends. Some of them declared not to be sent these type of documents. And this is what really 
um, forced me to call for this press conference. I want to press a briefing. I want to apologize to Gambian people. The advice that my parents gave me was to be truthful and be honest to people. And that is how I have lived my life all throughout. I have been lured in into politics through members of Gambia Action Party with a desire for us to join together and move this country forward through politics. I have never committed any criminal activities. I'm not a criminal, not even Not even during this moment. I am completely innocent. I am completely innocent. I am completely innocent. It is the criminals that are using me to fulfill their criminal desires, both very close to me and very far away from me. I have tried to live up to expectation. I have tried. At all times that I have been, six months since I returned, I have resigned my responsibilities to come and join these people, for us to be able to join hands and move the Gambia forward. Not knowing that I have joined a wrong group. There are people who are watching us, there are people who are with, here with us. If you trust me one year ago before this incident, if you trust me, before Tuesday when this incident happened, it is the same me that you knew. It is the same me that you trusted before. I am sorry because this thing has caused you sleepless night. I am sorry because this thing has caused you emotionally. It has broken some people down. Those of you who knew me knew very well that I am not desperate I am living with my family, and the only thing that people can do is to destroy me through politics. But Alhamdulillah, alameen, I want to tell my critics that it is today that I am even stronger. It is today that my spirit is even further rekindled than ever before. If you people can help me to use words to thank Gambians, both within and outside, I am really grateful, especially to the media fraternity. What I want to say is that considering the hostile nature around me, considering also the, the wisdom, the, the, the desire that we have to move this forward, I am going to charter my own course. And I will let every member of Gambia Action Party or every member, that people that are following me, know that course as soon as possible. The investigations are ongoing. Today, they just called me to say that they have a printout of the, the conversation that, they, that we requested from them. And it is because of this press briefing that I could not go there to see what they have for us. But I want to tell Gambians is that I am I'm an innocent person. I have been used by criminals. And I have been, um, uh, 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 my image is, the aim is just to tarnish my image. And today, I want to stand in front of you before the cameras to tell Gambians that I am an innocent person. I am not there to do this kind of thing. I have lived a life. If I am not to brag and people are not to associate me with saying that I'm bluffing, 
I will be revealing certain things that I have done. I'm a Muslim not by name. I am a practicing Muslim. And I, am, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give me something to be able to empower this deen.